Now that you know how to build a basic online registration, let's move on and learn how to add questions. I'm on the Registration Questions tab. I'm going to click Show Help. Nothing will show until you start adding questions, and then those help descriptions will appear. When I click Edit, I have a green Add Question button. This opens the dialog where all of the options are listed. And there's a separate help article that explains all of these, so we're not going to go into all of those. But I am going to uh, add a few questions. So I want to do a yes, no. Now it's struck through. You can only select it once. You can add as many yes, no questions as you want, but you can only add one section of them. So they'll all be grouped together. I'm going to click Done and go on and show you how that works. Notice that it says yes, no questions at the top, and there's an action. If I click delete, it will remove the yes, no questions. Even if I had questions below that, it would delete the whole thing. Until I add an item, I don't really have any questions. That's where you add the actual questions. Notice here, there's a text box for you to enter your question. Now I'm just going to put something like, did you take Spanish too? That can be answered with a yes, no. Add another question. Do you use Facebook? You might want to communicate with people that way. So this is how the, the yes, no questions work. You want to keep your questions short. That's about as long. You, you might have it a little bit longer. But each one of these will become a subgroup in your organization. At the beginning of the subgroup will be yes, colon, or no, colon, based on the answer the person gave. So you will have subgroups in your organization for each of these questions. If everybody answers yes, you'll only have one about Spanish 2. Yes, colon, did you take Spanish 2? And they will all be in that one subgroup. If some answered yes and some answered no, no, you'll have two subgroups for this one question. Some will be yes and some will be no. So that's how the yes, no questions work. So you can add as many as you want. Let's go back and add another question. I think I'm going to put a drop down, but I'll also go ahead and select check boxes and request. Notice that you can select as many as you want at one time, click done, and then come back and flesh it out or add the actual items. When you're wanting to select a type of option, you want to add a question, but when you want to add those actual questions or drop downs, those are items. I'm going to move below the yes, no to the drop down. Now, this will only allow the person to select one item. So I'm going to put um, purpose for the class. Why are you taking the class? Now, that's the label. The items are the actual options that they can select. And that you might say um, for work, and your subgroup would be work. We're not even going to bother with the fees, limits, date, and time until a more advanced uh, video. Someone might need it uh, for mission trip, and the subgroup would be missions. And let's add another one. I can go on. If I want two more, I can go on and click Add Item two times. Now those are there already for me to flesh out. But if you click Save at this point, these that are empty would go away. So for the mission trips, maybe um, to converse with family. So the subgroup would be family. When you have a drop down, you always want to give sort of a catch all. If none of those fit, what would they select? So I'm just going to put other. I don't need to put a subgroup because other is short enough. So if you don't put anything over here, the subgroup will be the name of the description. So the description is what the person sees when they check it. And the subgroup is what you're naming that behind the scenes in the organization. I have all of my drop downs there. I'm going to move to the check boxes. They can select more than one if you allow that, or they can don't have to select any. If I put a minimum of one and no maximum, they can select everything there. If you don't want them to have to select anything, don't put a minimum and they can just skip it. And options, you are 
interested in. And I'm going to click Add Item. And for this, I'm going to put Study Group. And I'll add, I'm going to go in and click a couple of them. Now I don't have to go back to the green button each time. So I want a study group or class fellowships. Um, maybe real life experiences with language, going out in the community, learning to speak. This is a Spanish class. So there's some options there. Now, some of these are a little bit long. Study group is fine. I'll just change this to fellowship for the subgroup and just experiences for this subgroup. I'm finished with those. The last one is a request. Now, request is not required. We use this mainly for ball teams where you can request a coach or a teammate or for a class where you might be divided into smaller classes where you want to be with a, uh, you know, a friend or something uh, or a roommate if you're going on a trip. In this case, I'm going to use it to just ask a question. Did you take Spanish 2? You can only add one request, and this shows up in several places, that, and those are identified in the help article, but it has a very special use to allow you to see that at certain points when you might be working with that, that class. Um, so I'm going to put a question mark there, and now they're all done. If I leave this tab right now, all of that work will be for naught. It won't be saved. So be sure you click the blue Save button before you leave the Questions tab. If you wanted to add a fee, we can do that. That's, this is still part of a basic uh, type of registration. If it has a simple fee, let's put Show Help and Edit, and they just have to pay the fee when they register, we'll just put that the fee is $15. We're not going to allow a deposit or a maximum fee if family members register or anything. We're just going to make it a basic $15 fee so they have to pay. Notice that there are some other uh, items on there that you can look, look at later when you get to the more advanced type of registration. Let's take a look at what it looks like right now. Uh, we've got a separate video about how to test it. This time we're just going to take a look at our um, check boxes and questions. So let's go to try registration. When I click it, I'm logged in. I don't care about what it looks like to a person that isn't logged in. I just want to see how the questions look. So I'm going to look and say, did you take Spanish too? Yes or no? Use Facebook. Purpose for the class. Other options you're interested in. And did you take Spanish too? Well, I forgot. I added Spanish too up here. Well, I want to know if they took it, but I want to know their teacher. That tells me I made a mistake. I need to go back and revise that question. I'm going to close the tab because my registration would time out and it would log me out of this session. So I'm going to go back to the questions tab. This time I'm going to hide the help and I'm going to click edit. The yes no question is still did you take Spanish too? But I'm going to scroll down to the request if you took Spanish too, who was your teacher? Now, it seems odd to have the question about it up at the top and the request down here. Well, we made it easy for you to move. I can move this to the top. That's where the yes, no question is. And now when I go to the top, my request, which doesn't say request on the registration, it'll say if you took Spanish too, who is your teacher, and a place for them to answer, and then the yes, no question. So now all I have to do is put this right above it. Can click move up and it moves it up in front of one or the other. Um, if you want the Facebook to be at the top, I can move it up. You can move the whole section, all the yes, no questions, or you can move the items inside there. Uh, so there are lot, lots of flexibility there. So look under the actions button and see what you can do. If you decide you want to cut and paste, you can cut and paste. And until you've actually cut, you can't paste. So just remember that. And I think I've got it like I want it. I'm going to click Save. And now I could 
go on and look at those again, but this time I want to move to messages because our article explains how you can add an image. So I want to show you how you could add an image to your confirmation email. All right, on the messages tab, I'm going to click edit and to click the confirmation body, I need to click edit again. If I want to put an image at the bottom, I can click here. Wherever my cursor is blinking, that's where the image is going to go. So if I want it there, I can leave my cursor there, go to the image icon. Notice what it looks like. It looks like a little picture. And I can either drop an image or click it and find it or enter a URL. Let me show you what it looks like if I'm going to drop an image. I have one on my desktop. I'm going over and I'm clicking on it. I'm grabbing it. I'm going to drag it over here and let it go. Notice it says it's uploading the image, and there it is. It's just a little reminder image. I can move it by selecting from the, the little pop-up toolbar. As long as it's selected here, I can also click on the corners and make it smaller. So that's how you can do that. If you want to remove it or add another, this says replace the image, you can do that. Or if you want that image to be a link to something, you could do that. But you can just remove the image that way. So now the image is gone. If I wanted to put a URL, I can grab a URL from online and then I can go back to the image, paste the URL, click OK, and there's an image that I got from the internet. I can move it over. I Make it smaller, and there it is. So there are several ways that you can put the image in there. When you're finished, click Save. And then be sure to save over here. So you've learned how to add questions, and you've earned, learned how to add an image to your um, confirmation. So this is great for a, a little bit more than just the basic basic registration. Just be sure to test it several ways or have your coworkers test it for you or along with you just to make sure you have it set up correctly.